Today, we're going to have ourselves another yeast shootout between the Lauven Borgevin RC2112 and the Red Star Premier Cuvée yeast. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I'm excited to share another um, yeast shootout with you guys. Now, I will not dive in too far deep into the rules of this. If you want to know all of the rules for the, how the yeast shootout works, go check out the link in my description. Uh, basically, what we're doing, we have the same mead recipe. I'll make sure and put it up right here. And we have two different yeasts. My goal of this yeast shootout is to try and see which yeast ferments better, in my opinion, on a traditional mead recipe. Now, we're not using any extra ingredients. I wanna um, make sure that's clear. The same mead recipe for each one, the same qua or, yeah, quantity for uh, each mead. So it's about a half gallon. I had to tweak my mead recipe a little bit for my first round because I am ultimately storing these in half gallon jars because the recipe only equals a half gallon. And whatever I was doing it before, I was losing mead. So let me tell you the two uh, kind of competitors we have today. We have the Lauven Borgevin, I think I'm saying that right, um, RC2112 versus the Red Star Premier Cuvée yeast. And I have some notes on them. Um, I want to tell you some specific things about them, uh, their alcohol tolerance and all those things. So the, uh, let's start with the Red Star Premier Cuvée yeast, which we'll go into here. It has a tolerance of 18%. Um, it is good for restarting. Um, stuck fermentations, and one thing I noticed on the description that someone said, they said that it uh, ferments fast, it's a clean and fast ferment. So I thought that was interesting. Is it a fast fermenter? Yes. It's got a temperature range of about 45 to 95 degrees. Very vast, very nice. Um, so that will be going into this one here in a moment. The Borgavan RC2112 has a, a ABV tolerance of 16%. It is good for, um, I thought it was interesting, is good for keeping tannins, like the tannin flavors in the mouthfeel, and color in a mead. So we will see if there's a color difference between these, um, ultimately. Is it a fast fermenter? It's a moderately fast fermenter. It's got a temperature range of about 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, between these two meads, um, they're only going to be a half gallon. We're ultimately going to do a taste test once they finish, but then I'm going to store them for long term and see if there's any taste difference between them. But I'm curious, based on Wild West, the Wild West rules, um, how these will turn out. I'm fermenting them at the same temperature. I'm aware that every yeast has a different fermentation temperature. These still fit in the temperature that I normally ferment in. Um, I also am aware that each yeast has a different nutrient necessity. I'm putting the same amount of nutrients into each one, which is basically a tablespoon of energizer, a tablespoon of um, yeast nutrient in each one. Does each meat need that? No, but this is again, Wild West rules mentality. Um, I have gone ahead and went through their rehydration process. Uh, for this part, it's really simple. In, you know, we're going to let them ferment here in a second. I'm just going to pour each one into their appropriate uh, container. So this is the Borgavin. I'm going to go and dump it in. It has been rehydrating for, uh, both of them have been rehydrating for 15 minutes. And the uh, cuvee yeast is going to go into here. I will shake these up here in a second. Um, here's how this works. Again, I'm not going to go too deep. I'm using this rule, this um, kind of sheet to analyze uh, the flavors of each one at the very end. Um, so when these are done fermenting, I'll let them sit for a little bit so they lose a little of that yeasty taste and I get more of the natural taste of the mead. And then I will uh, judge them based off of that score sheet right there. So we'll find out. I've done this with another set of meads. I have even more mead uh, recipes coming and more shootouts coming. So if you're curious and want to see those, go check them out. But I'll shake these guys up, stick some airlocks on them, make sure I got them put in the right place, and then um, I'll give you some updates on fermentation as they go. So let the shootout begin. One little interesting note about the Borgavin uh, 212 is that the color difference of their fermentations is, is quite drastic. Uh, well, not super drastic, but you can see that the uh, cuvee yeast is actually a little more hazy. And I think part of this 212 interesting fact was that it retains uh, color in a mead. Um, and so you can kind of see that here. It's can, keeping the color. It's not very hazy. I'll be curious to see if that ends up giving a... Um, 
different result. They're both still fermenting uh, well, so I'm not worried about this one not fermenting. But we'll find out what's really happening with it soon. Okay, with the Borgivin and the Cuvée test, they were both at 1.100 um, to start. They started about six days ago. What's interesting to me is the Cuvée yeast is done, pretty much done fermenting. It's almost dry, 1.0025 um, currently. And the Borgavin is way, way behind. It is at 1.0425. So it still has quite a bit of gravity to go. Um, and I find that really interesting. Uh, I am gonna let them continue to go, of course, and then I'll do a little taste test battle between them. But I find it interesting. This thing, the Borgavin um, was slow to get going and the clarity, it was much clearer before. Um, now I think it's starting to ferment more and hopefully at least, and it is, uh, getting a little more hazy. So, interesting. Let's give it a couple more days and then we will see what happens from there. All right, you guys, time to continue this yeast shootout. So we have the Borgavin RC212 right here and we have the QVA yeast. Um, both of them have finished fermenting. I will note that the Borgavin actually took probably about five or six days longer to finish fermenting than the uh, QVA yeast. So I find that really interesting. Um, I did do a gravity reading of them both, and they have both leveled out, so they are completely done. The, the Borgavin just took a little while longer. So they started off at 1.100 original gravity, and they are now at 1.000 um, gravity. So I have my samples here, and I need to grab my sheets, because we're going to go ahead and uh, do a little scoring test to or I'll score them um, and taste them and, kind of, and then come back and tell you what I'm tasting. Okay, I have the results. Um, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and, and taste them and tell you the things that I, I am getting from them because they are really, really different, surprisingly. Uh, well, not surprisingly. It's different yeast. We knew that this would happen. So I'm going to start with the cuvee side. One, if you look at it, you can kind of see um, the Borgavin's a little bit clearer. The one thing about the Borgavin I thought was interesting is that it retains the honey, the, uh, what is it, the color of a mead a little better, or of wine, um, a little better than most yeasts. In this case, it didn't really do too much. It wasn't a huge difference. This is a little clearer, even though it took longer to ferment than the Cuvée. Um, now, that of course, that goes into the point system. I'll talk about that here in a second. But... Tasting it, or sorry, the aroma on it. This one has a great honey aroma. I get a very clear honey aroma um, that is, it is like, a, because I've used this orange blossom, you definitely get fruitier notes, um, and I get more floral notes from this specifically. So now let's go and taste it. Good honey smell. Yeah, this is interesting. As I'm kind of going back and forth, they're, they're, again, they're vastly different. This one has a, a really nice mouthfeel and body, and the honey character is there, and the presence is a little stronger, more prominent. I like it um, because it's, it's very clear that it is mead-esque. If I try a traditional mead, I'm gonna find something that has more honey character to bolster it. Um, it's very smooth, it has a nice finish. Yeah. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you some of my notes about each one. Um, and really, this is interesting. Uh, color and appearance, I said, um, definitely, uh, definitely clear, good clear color, retained uh, the color well, and nose bouquet, little honey, um, has some heat to it, kind of. It's a little spice smelling as well. Uh, that flavor has a little spice presence and some floral notes. Uh, the finish. It's a good beginning to end flavor, smooth-ish finish. So again, that heat might have prevented that a little bit. Honey character, uh, semi-present, not super strong, a little hot, and uh, mouthfeel was a good full body. So let me tell you about the Borgavin now. Again, if you're just getting into this, I am comparing the two. So um, my goal is to find out which one is the better yeast right now, after this little moment, for uh, a traditional mead. So let's try the Borgavin. Again, vastly different. The smell on this one has way more fruitiness to it, has more, it's like, uh, 
it's very juice-esque. I, like, I feel like I'm smelling like an apple juice right now, which is really interesting. And um, it, it kind of threw me off, to be honest. I like it, but I also like, it throws me off. So it has a really good color. It's a little clearer than the Cuvée yeast. And so I it got a, you know, got some good points for that. Um, the nose bouquet, it has that very juice-esque smell. It's very, uh, maybe more wine-y in my opinion. It's still really good, uh, really nice. Uh, it doesn't have as much honey character as I would like though. Um, flavor, again, very, very juice, juicy. I, I don't, like, I know that's a weird way to explain it, but it is the way the yeast have changed up the mouthfeel of this. They've made it a little lighter, frankly, than the, um, the Red Star. So, uh, I, again, I, I kind of like this, though. I like it lighter. Um, it's still the same ABV. They're both 13.125%. It's got a really nice um, a tropical feeling to it from that orange blossom honey and then the fact that this yeast pulled out this more juice element to it or of it then um it just makes it really nice it is definitely very uh a little drier i would say it tastes drier at least and um it has a a smoother finish it's less hot it doesn't have as much alcohol heat to it it's still really good. Let me walk through my um, points for this. I said, or the notes for it, I said, color appearance, great clarity. Color retention was also good. Uh, nose bouquet, more honey smell. Um, it was a little more muted of a honey smell though. Uh, smells drier, and it was drier. Flavor, very wine-esque, good body, great honey character. Uh, it's, you know, great honey character on the back end, not necessarily on the front end. No spice, slightly floral. Uh, finish, great clean finish, um, not too hot, honey character present, it's apparent, but the yeast have altered it some in the mouthfeel, uh, I said I had pretty good mouthfeel. So let me get to the points side of this, and I'll go ahead and flash the points for each one instead of just going down the list. I gave the cuvee yeast 54 total points out of 70, and you can see on the screen all of the categories that I gave right there. Um, and it, you know, I think it has really good mead potential, but it's not in this, at this point, it doesn't taste as, as good as, in my opinion, the Borgavin, which I gave 61 out of 70 points. And I'll, again, I'll flash the um, points up there. So the Borgavin wins this shootout for now, but here's the thing. I'm holding on to these sheets and I'm putting them in a binder and in a couple months, I'm gonna reshoot out these things and we're gonna see if this is still true. And I'm gonna not look at my score sheet from before. I'm gonna try and avoid that so I can give a new score sheet to decide, you know, and see how things compare. See if I still feel the same way. So uh, the winner of this shootout by just a few points is the Borgavin RC212. Is that to say that this cuvee yeast is not good? No, I actually thought this one did a really good job of producing a mead um, I just think that Borgavin wins in this round. So this has been a lot of fun. And uh, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take them and put them into these half gallon fermenters because obviously this um, full gallon, we don't want the headspace on it. I will let them age and we'll do that shootout again later on. I'm not going to do this on camera. You've seen stuff move before. But this is uh, the third shootout I've done and I will continue to do these. I really like doing this and I hope that you've enjoyed this concept. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And if you have any recommendations for yeast you want to see kind of face up against each other, uh, make sure you do that. If you didn't understand the rules for this, go check out the rules uh, below. But this is the Wild West version. So some of you might be angry and say, well, you didn't give the cuvee yeast a full chance. This is the Wild West. We're talking in, in terms of how do they ferment in my house? Um, I know there's lots of factors, so I'm sorry, but that's just how this is. So. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. The winner of this one's the Borgavin. Um, go check out some other videos. Make sure you hit like and subscribe because man, we are we're a growing channel and it helps if you hit like. Go do it right now. It helps me out big time because it, it lets me know you like the video. And um, if you leave a comment below and say something about you know maybe what you want to see, I'll be able to put out more content towards what you want to see. So appreciate you all. 
got some big things happening on the channel. And uh, if you haven't seen the Mead Tournament of 2020, go check that out. That was my biggest thing I did recently. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. So I hope you have a great day. And cheers.